province against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's a huge conference on global warming that is presently being held in Paris, France. I'm sure you've heard about it by now. At the Global Warming Conference in 2009 in Copenhagen, Denmark, Al Gore said that oceans would rise by 18 feet if drastic steps were not immediately taken to halt global warming. Well, no steps were taken and ocean levels have not moved. Gore said polar bears were becoming extinct because of the melting of the Arctic ice caps. Yet the polar bear population sits at an all time high. So what's going on here? Here's the facts. As we came out of a cooling period of the 1970s, we did experience some corrective global warming. It had been cool, now Almighty God, Mother Nature, however you want to refer to it, He adjusts the temperature and now we moved into a warming period. That correction has now stopped. The earth has experienced no global warming for the last 18 years. Zero. None. No global warming. Now, a thousand years ago, the Vikings sailed through the northern straits. You can't do that today. It's all ice. This proves it was warmer a thousand years ago than it is right now. A thousand years ago, land was being farmed in Greenland that is presently encased in 12 feet of ice. They've dug down, they've seen the farms as they were being farmed. It was much warmer a thousand years ago than it is right now. They had no jet airplanes, they had no SUVs. The bottom line is the global warming scare is simply a hoax. Yet, Millions of dollars are being spent this week, probably hundreds of millions, are being spent as world leaders plan to spend trillions of dollars to stop what doesn't even exist. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely mind boggling. Now, here's the big question. Why? Are all these world leaders simply ignorant? Are they only responding to what they're being told? Why are they so insistent on having this global conference and launching the most expensive human effort in the history of our world? I'm talking about trillions, hundreds of trillions. Why are they so determined? Are they simply ignorant or are there actually people that have vested interest in making money from the crisis? Now, we know that's true. We know that Enron, back, what was it, 2010, they planned to sell carbon credits. Uh, They planned to uh, sell you a piece of paper or an email that said you had so many carbon credits and they were going to be the broker. It was going to be incredible. And Enron stock went through the sky and then it totally collapsed because we didn't sign on to the Kyoto Treaty. Therefore, we did not start in in the sale of carbon credits. And so their whole plans collapsed. However, we do know that Al Gore is heavily invested in green technology, as are many others. So they do have a, a vested interest. Now, beyond that, 
There are scientists who know that in order to get the grants from their governments, they need to continue to say what the politicians want them to say. Now, here's the big point. What do the politicians want them to say and why? There is another agenda. Now, let's pause a moment because I want you to get this. Why, since there's no global warming, I'm talking about zero for the last 18 years, since we can prove conclusively that it was warmer a thousand years ago than it is now, if there were a, an uptick in the temperature by two degrees, what would that hurt? What if where you live, it was two degrees more? Let's say a hundred years from now, that's what they're projecting. Two degrees hotter than right now. I can take it. I mean, that means the winters would be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, that means we wouldn't have to spend as much on heat. And the increase of CO2 makes the plants grow better so we can solve the world's hunger problem. So what's the big deal? What is motivating this continual drumbeat of propaganda? Global warming, global warming, the sky is falling. Uh, we must address climate change. You know, that's what's so laughable to me. They were calling it global warming, global warming. But after 10 years of no global warming, they said, uh-oh, we got a problem. I mean, people are stupid, but they may not be this stupid. Maybe we better switch our slogan to climate change because there is no global warming. So now the slogan became climate change. And all of the proletarian, all of the followers that don't think for themselves, all lined up and started chanting now, we changed one day from global warming to climate change, climate change, climate change, and CNN said it, and NPR said it, and uh, it was just absolutely, it pervaded the media, and most of the average people fell right in line. I don't understand it. It must be true. And guess what they're telling us? They're telling us that 97% of the scientists agree. Now, we can go back and we can find out that most of those scientists that are saying all this are on the payroll of the United Nations. So does the United Nations have a vested interest? Well, they do because this summit is being put on by the United Nations and they hope to pass environmental legislation that will put every single person on this planet under their control. Now, let me, let me back up because you missed it. They plan at this conference this week to pass binding international legislation that's going to control your life, your lifestyle, your home, your business, control all of us. The plan is to give everyone their own carbon footprint. You exceed that carbon footprint and you have to start buying carbon credits for the rest of the year. You may run out halfway through. Now then, it's gonna cost you several thousand dollars to get through the rest of the year. They may set it at several hundred dollars at first, just so the opposition won't be too severe. But they're planning on everyone, if you run, if you exceed your limits of carbon emissions, you're gonna to have to buy carbon credits from someone who doesn't use theirs in Zimbabwe or uh, some other third world country where they have no in industry. So this is going to be a massive wealth redistribution scheme. Now we know that we have a president who favors wealth redistribution. Oh, by the way, in case you've forgotten, wealth redistribution is one of the main planks in the platform of international communism. Anybody that's for wealth redistribution is a Marxist. Now, I didn't say a communist because that would be a little too harsh, but guess what? Marxism is communism, communism is Marxism, and Marxism is socialism, and socialism is communism. I mean, we get so many words out there that after a while, we don't know whether we're pitching or catching. We just go over the television and say, I'm watching the ball game. I don't care what they do. Or I'm watching the soap operas. I don't care what they do. It gets to that point. 
But when we reach that point, we are then vulnerable to being placed under the slavery of international law. You cannot have international law and retain sovereignty. If there are laws that supersede national law, then you're no longer a sovereign nation because the very definition of sovereignty is none above you except God. That's the very definition of sovereignty. Consequently, we right now are in a master plan to pass international law so that we can implement international government. Now, let me slow down here for just a moment. Why would they want to do this? Because the global planners, the global dreamers, believe that nationhood is our problem. That because every nation has its own army, and when nations are pulled into conflict, which inevitably does happen from time to time, Every nation has its own army and therefore they go to war. The only way to stop war is to get rid of all the armies, have total global disarmament. That's the reason the disarmament section at the United Nations is one of the biggest sections above all. And all the nations get rid of their armies and now you have one army at the UN. And since you have one army, it won't fight with itself. So now you're not going to have any war. It's going to be the road to peace. Now there's one haunting question. What happens when Adolf Hitler gets control of the only army that's left? Now you've got the world's greatest global tyranny. And I know people say that's not going to happen, but your Bible says it's going to happen. Your Bible prophesied 2,000 years ago. The very world government that's being set up right now, and if you don't think world government's being set up, answer this for me. Then what's the world court? And what's the World Bank? And what's the International Monetary Fund? And what's the World Health Organization? And what's the International Criminal Court? What's the World Trade Organization? Are these all just figments of our imagination? Oh no, they are wielding massive power right now over all the nations of the world. We are watching world government. We are in the process of being globalized. Globalization is simply the process of moving from the nation state structure of the world to a system of global governance. And global governance is simply a very sly term to say world government. Right now, we are moving into one world government. And the meeting happened this week. The agenda of that meeting is not global warming. There is no global warming. None. The agenda of that meeting is to get us used to international law and international taxes so that we will accept global governance. Strobe Talbot said it this way, way back in 1992, he wrote an article for the Time magazine. It was entitled, The Birth of the Global Nation. And he said in that article, in the 21st century, National sovereignty as we have known it will cease to exist. We will all answer to a single global authority. Now, who cares what Glo Strobe Talbot said in 1992? Well, we all better because today he's the president of the Brookings Institute, probably the most influential liberal think tank in America, and he has worked with John Podesta to set up President Obama's agenda for his presidency. He has worked together with him as they, they were the people that transitioned from candidacy to presidency. They helped make the transition I'm talking about. The man who believes, Strobe Talbot, who believes that national sovereignty as we have known it will cease to exist in the 21st century. We will all answer to a single global authority. And now all we've heard is globalization, globalization, globalization. Nobody understands it. Nobody bothers to understand it. But we better, because your Bible prophesies that there's a world government coming and that a very skillful tyrant will end up seizing control of that world government and that he will impose his will upon the peoples of the world that person is called the Antichrist. Is he alive? You better believe he is. 
He's alive right now. Now I've got something else I've got to get to. Because not everybody is asleep at the wheel. There is a very special documentary set to open in Paris. It's a skeptical climate documentary set to rock the UN Climate Summit. The title of it is Climate Hustle. Climate Hustle is to have red carpet premiere in Paris this next Monday. The skeptical climate documentary is going to rock the climate debate. President Obama and world leaders will be greeted by the new film debuting in Paris this coming Monday. It's going to be a gala Paris red carpet premiere for the new Climate Hustle skeptical documentary. It's going to be held at Cinema du Pantheon December the 7th, 7.30 p.m., right in Paris. C-Fact will hold the world premiere of its long-awaited Climate Hustle skeptical documentary film at an invitation-only red carpet event in Paris during the UN's COP21 International Summit on Climate Change. Now, you may be wondering what COP21 represents. That's the name they've given to these yearly, these annual climate change meetings, and it stands for Conference of Parties 21. Next year, they'll have Conference of Parties 22. But the COP21 is a summit on climate change. That's, that's what's being head, held right now featuring interviews and comments from more than 30 renowned scientists and climate experts, Climate Hustle lays out compelling evidence that devastates the global warming scare. Film host Mark Morano, founder and publisher of CFAC's award-winning Climate Depot News and Information Service, leads viewers on a fact-finding and oftentimes hilarious journey through the propaganda-laced world of climate change claims. The film is the first climate documentary to profile scientists who have reversed their views from supporting the so-called consensus position that President Obama likes to talk about. He says, we have a consensus. They all agree. But these people used to uh, subscribe to the consensus now that they've moved to a conversion to skepticism. The film also profiles politically left scientists who have now declared themselves skeptics of man-made global warming. Now, let me pause with you for just a moment. Many of these very people used to work for the United Nations and these special committees on climate change, but they became so disillusioned with the bending of the facts to push the global warming agenda. And when they saw dishonesty that was feeding this whole movement, these people that have helped make this film, which will premiere this coming Monday evening, December the 7th, and it's going to be available in the United States of America in 2016. Let's continue on. David Rothbard, CFACT president and executive producer of the film says, Climate Hustle is the most important climate documentary since Al Gore's Incon An Inconvenient Truth. Gore's film kicked off a decade of scaremongering junk science. CFAC's film debunks the scare and clears the way for a return to sound science and rational debate. National syndicated columnist Cal Thomas calls climate hustle tremendous and says anyone who believes in climate change after watching this film needs the type of reprogramming given to cult members. Climate Hustle assembles an impressive group of experts in climate science and policy, many of whom 
worked on the UN's climate assessments, but left after the UN ignored overwhelming evidence that contradicted its position. Is anybody listening here? These scientists said, I can't take it anymore because as scientists, they presented evidence that contradicted the position of the United Nations on global warming. The very information that's being used to drive this whole movement right now, they said, I'm out. And they have contributed to this film to try to wake the world up to the folly of what President Obama and other world leaders are determined to cram down our throats. The pause they at first denied existed. Okay, let's pause just a moment right there. Speaking of pause, this pause in global warming. Remember, there was a cooling period prior to 1975. There were actually articles in Time Magazine saying that we're entering a new ice age. Well, because of the cooling, now nature adjusted, we had a warming period. Not a dramatic warming period, but a warming period nonetheless until 18 years ago. Now that period has paused. Some people are saying we're going into a cooling period again. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not. Nevertheless, there's no global warming. Now, the pause that they first denied existed, uh, then about five years ago, the UN IPCC, that's the International Protocol on Climate Change, the chief admitted that the pause existed. The actual pause is now 19 years and nine months. They denied it. They admitted it. And some warmest actually took credit for their green policies creating the pause. They claim their policies are working. Once they couldn't explain away the pause, then they decided to take credit for it. But guess what? They'll tell you themselves. They have already told us it's going to take many, many years for us to make a difference in carbon emissions. Okay, the bottom line. Carbon emissions have nothing to do with global warming. Are carbon emissions up today? Yes, they are. But if you'll study the very timeline by Al Gore showing the temperatures as compared to carbon emission rises, the temperatures have always gone up first, about 800 years first, before the carbon emissions follow. So the theory that carbon emissions are causing global warming is simply not true. Now, I want to go back to this film because Murano, the the director of the film, was interviewing with Sarah Palin. And in the conversation, here's the way it went. The film is going to document scientists like Dr. Judith Curry who are re-examining the evidence. They used to be in line with the UN and Al Gore. They are coming over to being skeptical. We have a Nobel Prize winning scientist. We have French socialists who have reversed themselves. Many of the left wing scientists, people who voted for Al Gore and Obama, now say the evidence for global warming is weakening. Weakening, I guess, 19 years and nine months with none, that's weakening. Nobel Prize winning physicist, doctor, Ivar, Giever, global warming is a non-problem. I say this to Obama, excuse me, Mr. President, but you're wrong, dead wrong. Global warming really has become a new religion. I'm worried very much about the UN conference in Paris and uh, in November, which is now taking place, started November the 30th. I think that the people who are alarmist are in a very because it's like huge momentum and all the media is quoting global warming, global warming. Well, I forget they've changed that because there's no warming. Now they're saying climate change, climate change. It's like all the little piglets out in the barnyard. They all are chanting together as it's orchestrated from on high. Anyway, we have to stop wasting huge, I mean huge amounts of money on global warming. France's top weatherman has recently been hired by the Kremlin after being fired because he dared to question global warming. You want to get fired from your job? Question global warming because this is a religion. 
They don't listen to logic. The Daily Caller, just yesterday, December 1 of 2015, reports this. France's top weatherman has found a new gig after being fired in November for questioning global warming in his new book. He's working for Russian state-owned media now. French news outlet Le Figaro reports Philip Vadir is covering the United Nations Climate Summit in Paris for Russia Today. Vadir has a daily news segment dedicated to covering what goes on during the UN climate talks. This is an example of one of his reports. Hello, I am very happy to talk to you about the daily COP21 in freedom. He's referring to the fact that he did not have the freedom to talk while he was employed by France. Now that he's employed by Russia, they allow him to talk. That's the way Vidir opened his first segment on Russia today for the United Nations. Vidir, the former head of France's Two's Weather Service, and France Two is the name of a channel, was fired early last month after publishing a book questioning the global warming narrative being pushed by environmentalists and politicians. Vadir's book, Climate Investigation, claims activists are exaggerating global warming science to scare the public and says the UN politicized the issue and published false data. Well, listen, we're reaching the end of this particular segment of our program. I want to pause right there. But I want you to know you need to know what the prophecies say. All that you're reading in the news, you can't trust it. But we have a course called Understanding the End Time, 14 DVDs. You need to go through that course right now, immediately. If you're interested, give us a call. The number to call is 800 end time 1-800-363-8463. Tell them you want the Understand the End Time course. Stay with us now for the next segment of our program. We'll be back in just a moment. We here at End Time are excited about the seven seals. I mean the seven sales of the season. End Time Ministries has seven great Christmas gift ideas full of meaning and truth for your loved ones to open on Christmas Day. On Wednesday, get 50% off all video and audio downloads. Take advantage of this deal to enhance your prophecy library, starting at just $1.99. On Monday, December 7th, get a two-year subscription to End Time Magazine for only $20.15. End Time Magazine explains current events through Bible prophecy on a bi-monthly basis. Keep listening in the coming days to hear about the rest of our sales. Not a bad idea to keep listening to know what the seven seals are as well. Happy shopping! Hey, this is Anthony from the End of the Age control room. So I know some of you are about to turn your radio off because your station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age. We're sorry about that, but we have good news because now is your cue to turn your computer or mobile device on and head on over to endtime.com. There, click the watch button to continue to listen or watch the program. You can also finish up later by going to endtime.com and click the archives link. We need you in here. Well, there's my cue. I got to go get ready for the next half of the show. So just head on over to endtime.com and we'll see you there for the next segment of End of the Age. Well, as we were mentioning before our break, one of France's leading weathermen even committed the heresy of claiming there could be some benefits in a warmer climate. That's actually what saying. As we're continuing on our article, I want you to see what else he had to say. So he says there's some benefits in a warmer climate. And continuing on, he goes ahead to say, I'm now having to work for Russia. Let me just tell you real, real, real quickly here um, what else he said, because I thought it was so interesting. The American media has also criticized Russian President Vladimir Putin for being dismissive of global warming. In 2003, 
Putin said warming would allow Russians to spend less on fur coats, adding that agricultural specialists say our grain production will increase. And thank God for that. Now, this is Putin's response to what if the temperature goes up a degree or two? Putin believes there is no global warming, that this is a fraud to restrain the industrial development of several countries, including Russia. Well, that's what's going on. We're coming to the phones now. And if you'd like to be on the air with me, if you'd like to discuss this today, we're talking about a world-changing event. The number to call to be on the air with me, 877-END-TIME. That's 877-363-8463. Because they are playing with your future right now. And President Obama is determined to ram this down our throats. Now, 75% of the American public does not believe that global warming is a threat. President Obama recently stated that global warming is the world's number one threat. I mean, right while ISIS is slitting throats and putting pilots in cages and setting them on fire and kidnapping women and children and taking them, making them their sex slaves. Right while all that is happening, our president says our biggest crisis is global warming. President Obama, there's not been any global warming for 18 years, 19 years now. It's not a problem. Why is he so determined? because he is an avid believer in one world government. And he is determined to push us so far into global governance that perhaps our next president won't be able to get us out or perhaps we'll all get used to us and we won't even know what it's like to be a sovereign nation anymore. Global governance will be the way to go possibly. We have International law, I mean, after all, they so glorified international law. You know, Israel must obey international law. What's that? Why does Israel have to obey international law? I mean, they say that Israel invaded another country. Israel didn't invade another country in 1967. The territory, the Palestinian territory, was under the British mandate. There was no country there. It was occupied by Jordan in the 1948 war. Before that, it was under British mandate and then under the UN for about a year. And then it was occupied by Jordan. They came in and took it over when they were trying to destroy Israel in the 48 war. And then they attacked Israel in 67 and Israel reversed it and drove them back across the Jordan River back into their country. And now Israel take control of that territory, the territory biblically known as Judea Samaria, and it belongs to Israel. It should belong to Israel. But they now trumped up this thing called international law where the United Nations can tell sovereign nations what to do. You say, oh, I think that's a pretty good idea. It may be a good idea until they practice it on the United States of America. Then it may not be such a good idea. Okay. Well, let's get to the phones. Uh, calling from Montana, Pana. Dan is calling. Hello, Dan. Hi, Irvin. Um, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Hey, um, you know, I don't always get to hear everything that you're talking about, so I'm not aware uh, if you've already mentioned this or not, but are you aware of the Global Warming Petition Project? No, over I'm not. 30, what, over 31,000 American scientists uh, uh, and not over 9,000 with PhDs have signed a petition um, that uh, they do not agree with man-made global warming. And um, and it's it's pretty dramatic. If you, they they have a website you can go on and read everything that they have talking about it, and it's it just kills everything that they that uh, you know Obama's saying that uh, there's that we're causing this. It's just a you know Dan. Right. I, I had heard about this. Now that you mentioned, I didn't recognize the name of it, but I mm -hmm. am aware that there's a petition out there with like thirty one, thirty two, thirty three thousand scientists that have said. Uh, don't believe the propaganda that we're all in consensus that this exists uh, because it does not exist. So you're absolutely right. Uh, do you have that website again so that a lot of our listeners could go there if they choose to? Well, um, I typed in Global Warming Petition Project, and it came up, and, I'm, and it's 
petition, P-E-T-I-T-I-O-N-P-R-O-J-E-C-T dot org backslash index Okay. All right. Well, if, if our people know Global Warming Petition Project, that'll do fine. They'll get there just like you did. And so all of you out there, if you're interested in looking uh, this up, uh, please do. And, you know, Dan, when we see what's going on in our world and they're determined to brainwash the world into believing in global warming, the next question is why? I mean, back, when was it? 2009 right before the Global Warming Summit in Copenhagen, someone hacked into the global warming scientists, the leading global warming scientists, and published a lot of their emails. And in their emails, they said such things as, don't let that scientist be accepted in the scientific journals because we don't want to lend credibility. He doesn't believe in global warming. And then they had... Another one wrote to uh, his fellow scientists and says, we must hide this decline. Speaking of the cooling period of the 1970s, we've got to hide the decline. That does not fit into our propaganda. And there was actually a cute little uh, video that was produced called Hide the Decline. I wish I had it for you. I would love to play it. But nevertheless, we don't have that today. But all I'm saying is uh, we need to realize that the reason these scientists cooperating because they're making millions of dollars off this, the governments are gladly funding them as long as they will sing the party tune. I've listened to uh, NPR News quite a bit, and I've been waiting for them to bring one guest on who does not believe in global warming. It hasn't happened. I mean, I've heard hundreds of interviews but it's always beating the same drum. They're not going to let anyone on there that does not agree with their agenda because this is a propaganda campaign that that we're actually experiencing here, and that's what all of us need to realize that. Hey, hey, Irvin, uh, one one other thing. Have you um, seen, there's a book out that's called uh, um, Wiki versus NWO, and I'm gone. Uh, I have not heard that, but... uh, It... It, it, uh, um, I found it online, and um, it talks about the reason NWO, New World Order, and uh, whoever wrote this, uh, talks about why they're coming up with the global warming and uh, and the creation of a new world order and one world government. I was reading in it. It was quite interesting. Okay. Very good, Dan. We appreciate it. Thanks so much for the phone call today. Uh, let's go on to our next caller and calling from Washington. Jake, Welcome. Hello. Uh, you're on the air, Jake. Yes. Uh, does Trump and uh, those politicians know about this? Uh, some of them do. Some of them do not. Uh, Donald Trump was really taking President Obama to task. I heard it earlier this morning on Fox News. Uh, President Obama had made the speech that uh, global warming was our most critical problem in the world today. And Trump was calling him delusional. I mean, for him to believe when we're wrestling with ISIS, slitting people's throats and taking women captive by the thousands and forcing them into sexual slavery. And our president says that global warming, and there's not even been any for the last 19 years, and he's saying that's our worst crisis. Uh, Trump was just, uh, he was just uh, absolutely credulous that President Obama would say such a thing. Okay, how about the, the, in the first uh, chapter of the Bible, it says springtime will be, summer will be, harvest will be until the end time. That is not being exposed enough. Yeah, and you're right. The Bible says uh, until the wrapping up of everything, there That's will right. be It'll spring, summer, yep. fall, and winter. You're right. That's, That's exactly right. what the Bible says. Yep. Okay. Hey, appreciate it very much, Jake. Uh, let's move now to Indiana. Raymond's calling from Indiana. Hello, Raymond. Yeah, Irwin, I'm a pretty new uh, listener, but I was just wondering if you thought that the reason Obama is acting this way and uh, easy on ISIS is because he wants to be the world leader. And I'll take my answer uh, off the air. Well, thank you very much, Raymond. There is no doubt in my mind 
that if President Obama could become the head of the United Nations, he would snatch it up so fast that we wouldn't realize what happened. Now, Iraq, some of the generals of Iraq are now saying they believe that President Obama secretly favors ISIS. Now, that's not coming from me because I don't know that to be true. I have wondered what goes on inside of his head, though, because he had a father who was a Muslim, and he is enamored of his father, so much so that he named his book Dreams of My Fathers, and he's talking about a father that he never knew. Now, his dad, I think, left him when he was one or two years of age, and you know the, how that can affect an individual. So I have really wondered, and of course, he attended a, a school. He lived in a Muslim country for several years, and so he has very strong Muslim tendencies. Some people believe he is a Muslim. I can't tell you that for sure. All I can tell you is that I had all kinds of questions in my mind when the first year of his presidency, he was in Egypt and he made the statement that the sound of the imam calling people to prayer in the evening is the most beautiful sound on earth. And I thought, wait a minute. He says he's a Christian and the call to pray to Allah is the most beautiful sound on earth? He certainly sounded like a Muslim to me that day. Again, he says he's a Christian, but let me tell you, a lot of Muslims claim to be both Jewish and Christian. I was leading a tour through Turkey, and we had a young man, very nice young man, who was our Turkish guide. I would say he was about 26 years of age. And he stood at the front of our bus the first day. He said, now I understand that all of you are Christians. He said, now I'm a Muslim. He said, but I want you to know that before you can become a Muslim, you have to first of all be a good Jew and a good Christian. My ears perked up. And he went on to say, because you see, Muslims believe that in Abraham, they believe that Moses was a prophet. They believe that Jesus was a prophet. They just believe that there's another prophet, Muhammad. And I said to him right there in, uh, on the bus in front of everyone, I said, you believe Jesus was a prophet? He said, yes. I said, well, did you believe he was the Messiah? He said, no. I said, well, he claimed to be the Messiah, so you must believe he was a false prophet then. He looked at me and said, I'll have to ask my mother. That was his response to that. We'll be back in just a moment. Give us a call. With holiday greetings, send prophecy teachings and be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful sale of the year. Buy three Understanding the End Time 14 DVD sets and get two free. With our generation being the end time generation, it is so important for every single person to go through this series. You can give that understanding to your friends and family. And the love you'll be showing, their hearts will be glowing when your gift appears. During the most wonderful time of the year, Call 1-800-END-TIME to order today. Ever wish that there was a newspaper that just reported articles that related to Bible prophecy? Well, endtime.com has just that. We have stories fresh off the press that you can get on the Prophecy in the News page. Reporting daily, we make sure that you know the latest that is going on in Bible prophecy. You can also join the conversation discussing articles with others, and asking questions about the news stories to our staff. We've got extra, and you can read all about it by going to endtime.com, and on the homepage you'll find Prophecy in the News. So why are we talking about global warming on a prophecy program? Well, it's simply because the Bible prophesies one world government and the leaders of our world have now bought into the need for one world government and they see the global warming message as the horse they can ride to push the world into one world government. They have been telling us for a long time that we must think globally now we must have global laws to settle global problems. 
And if they can convince us that we have a water problem and an air problem, those are global problems because all nations drink the same water, all nations breathe the same air. They understand all this. And so they are determined that they are going to produce a worldwide movement. And believe me, they are being successful. I mean, they have infiltrated the colleges. They have uh, sowed this green technology. They have pushed all of this, that the planet is now in danger. You must save the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, the planet is not in danger. I'll tell you what we're in danger of. We're in danger of the wrath of Almighty God because of the way we're living right now. We are moving straight into the arms of the Antichrist, the coming one world government. The technology is being set up right now for the implementation of the mark of the beast. I read an article just recently where Tim Cook, the head of Apple, said, our children will not know what money is. We'll all function with numbers. You know, the Bible prophesied that 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, the Bible prophesied you'll have a mark or a number, and without it, you won't be able to buy or sell. It's in your Bible, Revelation chapter 13, and now we're watching it come to pass, many of us. I think about half of all transactions presently are being done electronically. We're ready for the mark of the beast very quickly now. But we've all got to get together. Any dissent cannot be tolerated. The leading weatherman in France lost his job because he dared challenge global warming. That's all. It's such a religion. that You don't dare speak against it. We're reaching the point where free speech can no longer be tolerated. You can't speak against certain things. You can't say certain things or else you're considered a bigot and therefore not to be tolerated. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not, that hap- let's not let that happen in the United States of America. I don't care if you say things that I hate to hear you say. I still defend your right to say them. We don't need to start determining what a person can say or not say. Uh, I don't believe in the Muslim religion at all. I absolutely believe it's a false religion. And yet, I don't want to outlaw Muslims being able to have freedom of speech. I want the freedom not to listen to them. But at the same time, I want everyone to have freedom of speech. Because if you can take away their freedom of speech, tomorrow you can take away my freedom of speech. That's the reason our very wise forefathers embedded it in our Constitution that we would have the freedom of speech. Thank God for this marvelous freedom. Let's not let anyone ever take it away. But it's already starting to happen. Because if you say anything against homosexuality, now that if you say anything against global warming, you can quickly find yourself out of a job because the big decision makers, the big corporate owners... They all have bought into this vision of one world government. And they're forcing everybody, they're making everybody afraid to say anything or else they'll be boycotted. That's where we are right now. I want to get back to the phones. Uh, Phil is calling from New Jersey. Hello, Phil. Yes, Brother Baxter. Good afternoon. How are you today? Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. I was calling because uh, I've been listening to the daily podcast for over a year, and I've been watching the TV program for over a year. And finally, about uh, 30 to 45 days ago, I pulled the trigger and got the CD version of the end of the age 14 and uh, uh, 14 discs. And I drive about 45 minutes to an hour uh, each way to work. So that's almost two hours a day. And I've been through the 14 discs multiple times, and I am just learning so much. And I was uh, reflecting on what you had talked about with uh, the deadly wound being healed in Germany. And I was, I'm 41, and I was recollecting something that I thought I remembered in middle school or high school, that Germany was actually divided into four pieces after World War II. So I go to Wikipedia, and sure enough, my memory was right. The Allies each got one-fourth of the country, the USA, Great Britain, Russia, and I believe France. And 
they each got one fourth of the city of Berlin. And of course, we know how history played out. Uh, the UK and France and the USA said, you know, we don't want one fourth of Germany and we don't want one fourth of Berlin. Um, and, uh, you know, Russia, of course, decided to keep their part of Berlin. But, you know, I haven't heard you, I mean, I'm not blowing smoke here. I haven't heard you say something incorrect in over a year, and I wanted to give you public audits and add ammunition to uh, your discovering the deadly wound being healed and uh, remind you if maybe you had known in your youth that Germany was actually cut up into four pieces, not just two. Yeah, you're actually uh, correct on that, Phil. When they, at the end of World War II, put different parts of Germany under uh, different administrations. By then, Great Britain was horribly weakened. France was horribly weakened. And so they pretty much delegated their portion to the United States of America. And the U.S. launched the Marshall Plan to go in and rebuild Europe. And that, a lot of that Marshall Plan went to France, went to Germany and other places. But you're right. It was divided up into four pieces. And I I think there's still four huge segments of Germany today. It's been a little while since I went down that road, uh, but it is interesting that Germany was divided up into four pieces at the end of World War II. Yes, and um, I don't know if you or your staff uh, got the scan I sent over to you folks. I called about 60 days ago. Again, I'm a, I, I am or was. I don't know what the proper phraseology is, but I was a lifelong Catholic for 40 years, and in the footnotes of the Bible, uh, the Roman Catholic Bible authorized by the Pope, the city of Seven Hills is Rome, according to the Roman Catholic Bible. And I wanted to just, uh, you know, see if you had gotten or your team members had gotten a scan on that and see if you had any additional comments or thoughts as, uh, as I continue to move forward in my, in my learning. Um, I don't know that I have personally gotten that scan. I've only been back from Israel for a week and a lot of things bottled up while I was gone. However, I am very familiar with what you're talking about. I have, uh, I have Roman Catholic copies of the Bible and I have too read that where they say in their footnotes that Rome is the city of seven hills. And Phil, I want to say, I want to take advantage of what you just said to everybody. Uh, what you're doing is a wonderful way to absorb this material. Uh, a lot of people do that. They get it. They get the 14 lesson series called Understanding the End Time on CD. And if you've got to commute to work and back, you can absorb a lot of material pretty quickly that way. So I really think you're doing a wise thing. And I, I, I'm really grateful that that's been a blessing to you. Well, as you said, the name of the Lord is a strong fortress. And uh, you have taught me and revealed so much to me. And I will continue to walk forward. And I thank you for all that you and and your ministry has done, so thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Phil. Great, great to hear from you. And let me say to all of you out there, if you would like to own the 14 DVDs, perhaps on CD, all you have to do is call 1-800-IN-TIME. They'll tell you you can either get it on DVD or CD. Now, if you're in a place where you can watch it, the DVDs add the graphics, and that's very enhancing. But at the same time, the CDs are wonderful as well, and they've been such a blessing to so many people. So wh whichever, whichever fits your particular situation the best, uh, just call our operators. The number to call, 800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. I urge you to get that right now because I'm telling you, these prophecies are coming down the pike like gangbusters. Real quick, back to the phones, to Canada. Shanda is calling. Hello, Shanda. Hi, um, Pastor Bachter, so happy to talk to you. Um, quick question. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a date that we can pinpoint the, the teaching of pre-trib, like the same way we can with the Trinitarian doctor, or if it's something that's just always kind of been around. No, Shanda, actually, it was around 19, I mean, pardon me, 18, 33 or 34. And here's what okay. I have read. Um, there was a, a meeting being held, and it's sort of ironic because this particular uh, meeting was made up of what they called the Irvinites, Irvinites. Uh, the leader of it was a man by the name of Irving. And 
at this meeting, they supposedly had a message in tongues and interpretation. The lady gave the, a lady gave the interpretation and she said that there was going to be a secret rapture before the second coming and that God would take his people away. Well, that's where that doctrine started. And then Schofield picked it up. And of course, he put his notes in the Schofield Bible. That's what really popular, popularized it. And many others picked it up as well. But anyway, as far as I have knowledge, and there may be someone that has additional information that I am not aware of, but it was around 1934, uh, 1834, pardon me, uh, that that happened. So it hasn't been that long that people have believed that. Perfect. Um, I appreciate that. I'll look into it. I know... I, I want to say thank you so much for everything you do. I got your DVDs four years ago now, and I was raised in church but didn't really understand, and it just kind of rekindled that fire, it put, you know, renewed faith, and it's just so easy to sit down with somebody and put your DVD, DVDs in, make coffee, and you do the work. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. God bless. Well, thank you, Shanda. It's so nice of you to say that. And I want to say to all of you out there, when we put these 14 lessons together, we knew that Bible prophecy was sometimes quite mysterious and elusive, but I didn't want it to be that way, and I don't believe God wants it to be that way. So we designed these lessons so they would be easy to understand. And according to all the feedback we get, you've heard some of it today, we succeeded in doing that. We've had people come up to us, I'm just talking about normal lay people, and say, I really understood it. I understood. I understand the Bible like I've never understood the Bible before. Prophecies like coming open to, to my mind, just like a flower opening up in front of me. And they come up to me so excited. And if you've reached the conclusion that prophecies cannot be understood, I ask you to give it one more try. Uh, get your own copy of the Understanding the End Time series. And you can do that by calling 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. And they'll let you know exactly what to do. I recommend the DVDs because you do get the advantage of the graphics. But if your particular situation would mandate that you should have the CDs, don't hesitate that because all the information is there even though you won't have the advantage of the graphics. So I really urge you uh, to do that. So interesting. I went to pick up a chair last night that my wife had bought and a lady ran out and said, I just had to meet you. I found out you were out here. I've been watching your program all the time. Same thing. Another man came out of the store and said, hey, I heard you were out here. Don't mind. I hope you don't mind me coming out to meet you. That's what all of you are doing when you support End Time Ministries. When you're a partner with us, you're helping us spread the message to the entire world. To be a partner, call 800 End Time. is a production of End Time Ministries. This broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.